Hello, I'm Jack Collinsworth, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to Collinsworth and Dad, an all-season show that gives us the opportunity to look past the matchups and into some issues that face the National Football League and the game of football in general. With that, I welcome in Sunday Night Football's Chris Collinsworth. Dad, it is a pleasure to have you here in the studio. Yeah, what happened to the whole Collinsworth and Son routine here? I thought this was one of those, you know, then the executive producers, yeah. I guess, stepped in and... I got second billing after that. And so, okay. I feel pretty solid about the name change overall. <laughs> so we have a, a big issue in the NFL, obviously. Over the past couple of years, it's gained even more momentum as concussions. Can you, do you have a comment on that? Well, I don't think there's any question that it is now the, the biggest issue facing the league because, you know, is this something that could ultimately take down football? How many more years – Will mothers sit by and say, oh, okay, with all this concussion information that's out there right now and some of the long-term effects of concussions, will they now say, all right, yeah, I want my son to go play football as opposed to playing soccer or lacrosse or some of the other options. And so from the NFL standpoint, they're instituting some new rules that a lot of fans don't like. They think it's taking away some of the, the toughness of the game, if you will. Uh, but from the NFL standpoint, and I think from most fans and parents standpoint, certainly the game has to evolve. It has to be safer than what it's been. And if it's not, uh, the lawyers are going to keep making money and the game is going to pay the price. Now, you definitely understand from a parent's perspective with Austin up at Notre Dame now. Mm -hmm. How, how many concussions would it take for you as a parent before you kind of looked deeper into it, maybe even told him to kind of step away from the game? I, that's a great question, and I'm not sure. I, 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 but I would say, you know, after one, anything after one, I'm starting to think about it. So if he had a couple of concussions and certainly uh, if he were knocked unconscious uh, more than once, then I'd be consulting doctors. Now, one guy – out in the, the Fort Thomas community that certainly knows a thing or two about concussions is former Pittsburgh Steelers running back Merrill Hodge. We had the chance to sit down with him and really kind of dig deeper into the topic. And hands it off to Hodge. Here comes Hodge over the left side. 35, 30, 25 down the sideline. Staying in bounds. He's all the way down. Goes into the end zone. Will they give him the touchdown? They do. Just inside the two. Hodge waits through there. Hodge is in. It's a touchdown. I had severe trauma on a Monday night game. I got hit from the side. Um, the only thing that I remember after getting hit was that I felt like I was in an earthquake. I was laying on the ground and I, I couldn't get up. I mean, the, the tremors were so bad. It's the only thing that I remember because after that, everything was told to me or I watched on tape. I actually made it back to the huddle, played two more plays, supposedly walked to the sideline, told my trainer I'd been hit in the head. Um, he asked me a few questions. Uh, in fact, one of them was in the paper the next day. He asked me where I was, and I said, uh, I don't think I'm in Tampa. He goes, how do you know that? He goes, because I can hear the ocean. So, and we're in Kansas City. The recommendations are that a concussion in a game, any concussion, even if you feel okay, you don't go back in the game. Now, what are those signs of a concussion that means that you're out for that game? Um, retrograde memory loss. In other words, you can't remember what happened before. I've seen kids that have played an entire football game when they were concussed at the beginning of the game and they cannot remember playing the game. Why are concussions and specifically multiple concussions dangerous to someone's health? The person's symptoms persisted or they had repeated concussions and as you know you get one concussion your risk of a second concussion goes up. You get a third concussion then the risk goes up even more. Five days later I was back on the field practicing getting ready for opening day. It was week five I believe it was we were at home against the Buffalo Bills and I actually had the same type of hit that I had in the first one. And some of the symptoms were the exact same. I mean, I kind of rolled over to the side. I didn't feel like I was in an earthquake though. I rolled over, I grabbed my head. The trainer actually started to come on the field and he, uh, he went back to the side because I went back to the huddle. Came off the field and actually my face mask had been crushed across my face. 
and my uh, chin was cut open, so they were going to stitch it up. But when they were stitching it up, they were talking to me, and I wasn't responding. So they took me to the training room in the stadium, and um, that is where actually I went into cardiac arrest. Well, when you injure the brain, um, you know, most of these injuries occur, you know, in the upper part of the brain. There's an upper part, the, the thinking part, what we call the cognitive part of the brain, and then everything kind of descends into a tunnel. And that tunnel is pretty small. It's only, about, it's only about this big. And that's called the brain stem. So, you know, all roads lead to Rome. And so if you shake that brain stem, or if that brain stem swells, that's where all the, what we call the autonomic, the routine things that you never have to think to breathe. You just breathe, right? Well, inside that, that brain stem is that organ that helps you automatically breathe. And if for some reason that organ becomes shaken or swollen, then you can stop breathing. And that is probably what happened. I went into depression. I had no, I had zero zest for life. I mean, there's absolutely no hope. I have lived there. I have been to a point in my life where, I mean, now I, I used to be, you know, I'm goal oriented. I have, I have a board over here and I have goals every year. And I've always been like that. And I was at a point where I'd lay on the couch and I could care less. I care if I live. I could care less about my future. Um, in fact, there was one day I was laying on the couch and it had been weeks where I just lay on the couch. I did nothing. I remember I, I took my shirt off for some reason and I'm like, oh my gosh. I'm like, I was getting fat. I mean, and I, I, I've always loved to train and take care of my body. And I'm like, and I was like, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care about it. I went to counseling. I go on the couch there and I would just, I'd sit there and let, let, listen to her tell me the things I would do and walk out like, I ain't do any of that. I don't care. Well, you know, the brain is composed of maybe a trillion connections. It's the most complex organ we have. And if you can't connect part A to part B, you may be able to receive information, but you can't process that information. Or you may be able to receive and process that information but if the pathway that allows you to express yourself, if that's somehow interrupted, then you can't speak it or say it. So any one of a number of pathways in the brain can be affected. But the ones that are primary, primarily affected are the ones that we talked about. And those are these lower temporal lobe pointy parts of the brain that slam up against your skull. And those are responsible for your personality. They're responsible for your your overall behavior, and they also have some uh, element of support in memory. I had to learn how to read all over again. I mean, from a first grade level to, in fact, when I finally felt I was back, which was almost three years later, almost four years later, as far as reading goes, I finished reading this General Patton book, it was a thousand pages. When I go back and think about it, I will tell you that probably the best thing that ever happened to me through that whole period was my daughter. Because just hanging out with her probably helped me more than any one person at that time. And she was only like three at the time. You know, so her perspective is exactly what I needed. She wasn't telling me what to do or I needed to, you know, start getting off the couch. She just, she just hung with me. You know, and then after a little bit of time, you know, it started to wear off. But I identify when I hear people say, you know, they have no purpose, they don't care. I can relate to that. A special thanks to Merrill for being so open with this story. Uh, with that, we welcome back Chris Collinsworth. Now, you played eight years in the NFL. Can you talk about some of the worries you had out there? Well, you know, I, I mean, realistically, every time that, that I forget somebody's name, which is almost every day, or that you just have one of those sort of senior moments, as we call them, you begin to wonder, is it because I played football? You know, is somebody else's brain – better at this age than mine would have been, could have been, should have been if I hadn't played the game. But I also know this, uh, if I had it to do all over again, even knowing the risks that uh, are inherent in the game of football, it teaches you so much. You know, I, I think there's nothing better in life than learning that you're going to get knocked on your butt and you're going to have to get up. And it's not going to just happen in football. It's going to happen in life. It's going to happen with your kids. It's going to happen with your marriage. It's going to happen with your business. Uh, so I think there are a lot of positives that come out of the game. Uh, is it dangerous? Yes, it is. I think to some extent, 
The people that play assume the risk of playing the game. And ultimately, uh, I believe in court, that's the way it's going to be decided as well, that you don't have to play football. You choose to, like some people choose to jump out of airplanes or, you know, go a thousand feet beneath the sea. But uh, I assume that risk and I'm still glad I did. All right. Well, thank you. Thanks for coming in and offering your expert insight. Thanks to Merrill Hodge and Dr. Pomerantz as well. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time here on Collinsworth and Dad.